This is Bonnie with Open Eyes of Heart. Today I'd like to talk with you about the spirit of Leviathan. Do you feel like you are constantly at war? Like you're fighting a never-ending battle that you can't seem to win? You may be dealing with a Levi Leviathan spirit. Everyday people are feeling the effects of unseen evil forces, and yet they don't know what's attacking them, let alone how to find victory. This spirit is one of the most powerful and destructive spirits in the spiritual realm. He is an ancient, high-ruling, demonic prince in the spiritual world. Leviathan especially targets leaders, ministries, and marriages. While many spiritual warriors are familiar with principalities and powers like Jezebel and witchcraft, few have heard of the marine demons. They are also called water spirits. And these powers wreak havoc in places near bodies of water. From Python to Leviathan and beyond, spiritual warriors are feeling the effects of water spirits, but often don't know how to combat these evil forces. The spirit is also, is, is often comes in through a wounded spirit involving rejection. The demon realm will set up an individual to be traumatized through rejection. The rejection then opens the door to the spirit of pride and offers pride as a false fix, an angel of light for the rejection. Before we get into the characteristics of a Leviathan spirit, let's take a look at the scriptures in the Bible that mention the, these, this creature. Uh, Leviathan is used many more times in the Amplified Bible but here in the King James Version, Leviathan is mentioned by name in these four verses. We have Job 41.1 that says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou hast let us down? Psalm 74.14 Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat for people inhabiting the wilderness. Psalms 104.26 there go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. Isaiah 27, 1. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. In Job 41, we... Uh, there's a portrayal of, a Leviathan is portrayed as a powerful and terrible beast that humans cannot control. He has sharp teeth, impenetrable scales, breathes out fire and smoke, and has the capacity to easily shatter bronze and iron. After all of our natural weapons have failed against it, the warrior flees from Leviathan. Leviathan is operating in the world today, in and through people. He aims to thwart God's purposes, and he hates humans, especially those who authentically follow Jesus. Leviathan wants to, nothing more than to kill, steal, and destroy anything of meaning or value in a person's life. This includes relationships, finances, dreams, goals, possessions, reputations, inner, inner peace, and even the gift of eternal life in heaven. Leviathan likes to mimic the devil. The ancient ruling spiritual prince is a principality. Leviathan is the ancient force of chaos that has been around since before God made mankind. It's sometimes referred to as the dragon or a sea monster in modern English biblical translations. As Yam, the twisting spur, spirit, excuse me, twisting serpent in the Baal cycle tablets and Loton in the Canaanite mythology. There's a book out there called the Dictionary of Deities and Demons in the, in the Bible. And in this book, we find the following passage on page 247. The devil in the New Testament is holy, the enemy of God and righteousness. 
He is called by several different names, reflecting the several traditions which were melded to construct the concept of the devil in the intertestamental period. And this period is between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In one remarkable passage, we find the great dragon, the serpent of the old, who is called the devil and Satan. The name devil and Satan were used interchangeably throughout, without apparent differences in meaning. The dragon clearly recalls Leviathan, the great dragon that is in the sea. And um, while the serpent is, the, is also the serpent who deceived Eve by his craftiness. This is found in 2 Corinthians 11.3 and also in Genesis 3, 1-15. through 15. Here, as in the intertestamental literature, images and names of the great opponent of the gods of heaven in the combat myth are, are used of the devil. And here's another depiction of Leviathan. In the apocryphal book of 2 Ezra, six, uh, chapter 6, verse 49 to 52, we read once again about Leviathan. 2 Ezra was originally in the 1611 King James Bible, and it talks about Leviathan being created by God before man existed. And we read in verse 49, thou, Then thou didst keep in existence two living creatures, the name of the one thou didst call Behemoth, and the other Leviathan. And thou didst separate one from the other, for the seventh part where, they, where the water had been gathered together could not hold them both. And thou didst give Behemoth one of the parts which had been dried up on the third day to live in it, where there are thousands of mountains. But to Leviathan thou didst give the seventh part, the watery part, and thou hast kept them to be eaten by whom thou wilt and when thou wilt. Now we're going to start discussion of the 12 characteristics of Leviathan spirit and how to recognize it and how to overcome it. Characteristic number one is the spirit of Leviathan loves to twist the truth. While it's true that all evil spirits are liars, the Leviathan spirit specializes in twisting the truth in the mind of the victims without them even really realizing it. It twists intentions and conversations. Someone can tell them something and they hear something totally different. So there's misinterpretation of what's said, and anything positive is twisted, and any type of correction is twisted, and the bringer of the correction becomes the enemy, causing disunity. To get things to go their way, they manipulate, and the people, the person tells half-truths because in their mind, they've told enough. Leviathan makes a person feel like if they tell the whole truth, their life will come to an end, thus invoking the spirit of fear to assist, and it causes confusion. As you can imagine, this causes significant communication issues and division in relationships. This division can harden the heart in a marriage divorce. That is the goal of the Leviathan spirit. He is also a covenant breaker. And that's characteristic number two. He has been tasked with breaking covenants. One of the primary missions of the demonic spirit is to destroy and break covenants. Leviathan hates covenant, covenants of any kind, especially the marriage covenant. It is responsible for nearly all, if not all, divorces. A person working under the influence of Leviathan is so prideful that they can't admit that they're wrong. They play the blame game in every Thing is always someone else's fault. This destroys relationships and creates division. Where there is division in a relationship, 
Often both parties want to end it and they are in agreement with the division. Now let's look at uh, scripture where Jesus is speaking. Again, truly I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth about any matter that they ask, it will be done for them from my Father who is in heaven. This is Matthew 18, 19. Although this is typically used for good, could the Leviathan spirit underhandedly convince people to invoke it for evil purposes? The scripture doesn't specifically say agree on earth about any good matter. It just says any matter. Demons twist God's word and spiritual laws to use them for evil purposes on, the, on a regular basis. How else could they gain the advantage in a life? God is not a liar. When he sets something in motion, it is set, period, for all. Demons look at for loopholes in areas where they can twist what God has created. Not only is it a characteristic of the Leviathan spirit to break covenants between humans, but it also rises against the covenant between God and man. This spirit doesn't want to work with anyone. And that leads us to the next characteristic, which is the Leviathan spirit severs your relationship with God. The spirit of Leviathan is very effective in separating people from the relationship with God. It causes hardness of the heart toward God. It can do this by twisting scripture and whispering lies about God, stirring up feelings of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, and resentment toward God. Thus says the Lord, so I will ruin the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people who refuse to listen to my word to go in the stubbornness of their hearts and have gone after their go other gods to serve them and to bow in worship to them. Let them be like the loincloth, which is not good for anything. Jeremiah 13, 9 and 10. Other gods include Leviathan, pride, and self. Once again, God is dealing with, with these spirits in Isaiah 6, 9 and 10 when he says, Go and say to this people, keep on listening and do not comprehend, and keep on looking and do not understand. Make the heart of this people insensitive and make its ears unresponsive, and shut its eyes so that it may not look with its eyes and listen with its ears and comprehend with its mind and turn back, and it may be healed for him. Leviathan can also cause people to doubt God's goodness and love for them. They may believe he is uninvolved and distant in their lives as a result. And they are feeling lost, confused, and adrift. Characteristic number four, Leviathan spirit is stiff-necked. Job 41, 22 to 23 says, Strength abides in its neck, and dismay dances before it. Its flesh folds of skin cling together. It is cast on it. It is not, it will not be moved. What does this look like in a person operating under the Leviathan spirit? They're very stubborn in believing that they know more than anyone else, and they are right and they don't want to do anything that is not their idea first. Characteristic number five, Leviathan spirit is hard-hearted and cold. Its heart is cast as, as stone. Yes, it is cast as a lower millstone. Job 41, 24. You'll notice that this spirit causes a person to become hard-hearted and coarse. They seem robot-like, and they have a nonchalant attitude of, whatever. The definition of hard-hearted is incapable of being moved to pity or tenderness, unfeeling. They don't have empathy and they have a hard time seeing things from another person's point of view. The Leviathan spirit puts its scales up, engulfing the person under its influence so that even the truth bounces off of them. 
In essence, the person is trapped inside and their authentic self cannot get out. Characteristic number six, Leviathan blocks the Holy Spirit in your life. Job 41, 15 to 17. The word air is in the Hebrew word ruash, which is Strong's 3707, and it's translated as spirit, talking about Leviathan. Its back has scales of shields. It is shut up closely as with a seal. They are close to one another. Even the air cannot come between them. They are joined one to another. They cling together and cannot be separated. The scales won't let the Holy Spirit in, blocking her out. In fact, the scales block the expression of the real person trapped inside of them too. Characteristic number seven, Leviathan is proud, haughty, and arrogant. It observes all the lofty thinking that it is better than others. And he is the king over all the children of pride. That's Job 41, 34. The spirit of Leviathan operates mainly through a prideful spirit. Often people become prideful because of a past rejection or trauma. The spirit of pride offers them a lie of power and a false sense of identity. It whispers, you are really somebody and you are special and not like anyone else. It causes the person to commit idolatry via self-worship. But in James 4, 6, it says that God resists the proud. So by agreeing with and operating in pride, the person cuts himself off from God. What better way to keep a person in bondage than to offer them false power and separate them from God, the only one who can actually set them free. Leviathan is also a mocking spirit. Mockery is just another way it attacks others. It will mock people walking in the obedience of God and those who disagree with them because their own opinions are so much more important. Mockery is defined as ridicule, contempt, making someone or something seem better or offensively inadequate or unfitting. Part of mockery is dismissing something said as unimportant or stupid. It's an invalidation. Characteristic number eight, the Leviathan spirit is a whispering liar. This spirit whispers lies. It implants thoughts which encourage false ac accusations against people, particularly those in positions of authority. It plants outrageous seeds that are a complete distortion or twisting of the truth. And then it hammers on those thoughts over and over again. Soon the person is saying and doing what Leviathan wants because they don't know how to discern, discern his lying thoughts from their own. Because of this, they latch onto the evil thoughts and claim them as their own, coming into agreement with the Leviathan spirit. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart is the mind, will, and emotion. Luke 6.45, the good person out of the good treasury of his heart brings forth good, and the evil person out of the evil treasury brings forth evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. We should take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ to prevent an evil spirit's thoughts from taking root in our minds and then in our lives. Pay attention to what you are thinking about. It is a negative or is it a negative or dark feeling? Take it to the scriptures and compare them. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, we are instructed. For although we are living in the flesh, we do not wage war against the flesh or according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but powerful to God. For the tearing down of fortresses, strongholds, tearing down of arguments, and all pride that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I'd like to bring to your attention the word captive. Captive is one 
forcibly taken in war. This is a war in your mind, and you must put forth the effort to take those thoughts that don't line up with the Bible by force. Chop them down with the sword of the Spirit by speaking what God says. Jesus, and just like Jesus did in the desert when Satan came against him with lies, twisting the scriptures and testing his character. This is in Matthew 3, 4 through 11. Leviathan also is a contentious spirit. Leviathan uses contention and misunderstanding to destroy communication be people, between people and God. This causes major division in relationships. It, if not stopped, this spirit will keep hammering on those divisions with his manipulation and lies until the relationship is literally destroyed. Strife is also one of the, his favorite methods of destruction. Strife is angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues and conflict. Look at the scripture in Proverbs 2, 20 to 28. It illustrates the contention of Leviathan clearly. For lack of wood, a fire goes out, and where there is no whisper, quarreling will cease. As charcoal is too hot, embers and wood is to fire, so a man of quarrels is to the kin to kindling strife. The words of a whisper are like d delicious morsels, and they go down into the inner part of the body. Like impure silver, which overlays the earthen vessel, so are smooth lips and an evil heart. On his lips an enemy will pretend, but inside he will harbor deceit. When he makes his voice gracious, do not believe him, for seven abominations are in his heart. Though hatred is covered with guile, its evil will be exposed in the assembly. He who digs a pit in it, he will fall, and he who rolls a stone on him, it will come back. The tongue of deceit hates its victims, and a flattering mouth makes ruin. In the book of Galatians, the Bible also warns us not to bite or devour one another lest we be consumed by one another. A person who is operating under the guidance of Leviathan will speak destructive words that have a negative effect on the hearer. The words they speak pull down rather than build up. They become more and more critical especially those in positions of power. A critical person can show criticism overtly through their words and covertly through their mannerisms. Characteristic number 10, Leviathan lifts up leaders in order to crush them. Because Leviathan wants to do as much damage as possible to destroy covenant relationships, it tries to involve as many people as possible. What better way to do that this than to target leaders and influencers? The spirit of Leviathan will prey on pridefulness within that leader and influencer and use his worldly minions to raise the leader up in whatever position he holds. That that could be multiple positions within the same person. For example, a husband who has been charged with leading his family is also a leader at his job or in the community. The higher Leviathan can bring him up, the further he can fall with witnesses when the principality decides to turn on him. This brings maximum destruction, affecting not only the leader, but also anyone in covenant with him and even those who witnessed the fall. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be a lowly or humble spirit with, a, with the poor than to divide the spoil of the proud. Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Characteristic number 11, the demonic spirit of Leviathan brings depression. 
Anytime you have a demonic presence operating in a life, you will see depression accompanying it at some point. This is the spirit of heaviness. The human soul is not made to live in darkness and will wither if it continues in the darkness. Instead, one must turn on the light to be set free. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Leviathan is the master of blame and self-pity. Because, leading, because the leading way the Leviathan spirit operates is through pride, you'll see it rear its ugly horns when fault comes its way. It cannot be wrong or at fault for anything. It's too good for that. It's above everything. So instead of humbling themselves, admitting when they're wrong and making things right again, the person under the influence of pride of and Leviathan will instead turn the blame on another person. They will be able to feel the major resistance rise up inside of them in these types of situations. Some people's pride will pull in the spirit of anger to help out uh, here, to help out to, by creating an anger wall or a shield so that the blame can, no blame can enter. Characteristics of those operating in the spirit of Leviathan. One way that you can tell if a person is operating under the control of a Leviathan spirit is to look at their attitude, the way they think, their speech, and their personality. Demons have personalities, just like people do, but they don't have a physical body to accompany them. So... If you want to know what, what a demon's personality is like, look no further than the person that it's possessing, because then you will see that demon's personality. For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Luke 6, 43 to 44. And here are some of the actual characteristics of the people. They will be self-righteous, arrogant, self-exaltation, self-will, self-centered, critical and judgmental attitudes, independent attitudes, self-glory, self-confidence, critical and condemning attitudes and thoughts, boasting over achievements and revelation, dishonor of authority indicates pride in their heart, desiring to be served. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. Desire for reputation, self-defense or defensive, talkativeness, Mockers or mockery. Dismissive of others. Dismissive of others' opinions and thoughts. They're scorners. They desire to control others, including narcissism and gaslighting. A condescending, con a condescending attitude toward other believers. It cannot be tamed desire for power, have an I am better than you attitude, always needs to be right. They think they know everything. 
They are opinionated. They play the victim and blame everyone else. They are very secretive. They fight the moves of God and the men of God. They are stiff-necked. They have rebellion. They are hard-hearted and worldliness. They war against deliverance. There is strife. They lack time in God's presence. They don't like to be around believers. They produce soulish gifts. They are covenant breakers. There's laziness, both spiritual and physical. And there's hindrance in spiritual growth. Now, how are we going to win this war against the spirit of Leviathan? We have looked at how Leviathan spirit operates and what it looks like when it is in operation. Let's get to the best part. How to get this demonic entity out of a person's life. You cannot play around with this spirit. It would be dangerous to attempt to do so. It can't be tamed or ignored. It must be completely renounced, completely renounced. A person who has lived under the influence of Leviathan pride and self-worship needs to be broken of the pridefulness. This is what has given the enemy an open door to bring in so much destruction into their life, as well as other people that are around them in their influence. Because of the way that Leviathan works, we, we can't wait any longer. The, hard, the longer we wait, the harder it gets to take the spiritual steps needed to get rid of the influence. All proud, self-righteous, and independent attitudes must be broken off. We must rely on Jesus. What he had, did on the cross for mankind and the power of God to slay this dragon Remember, you are not fighting against a person that is oppressed or depressed, uh, excuse me, oppressed or possessed by this evil entity, but the spirit itself. You must use spiritual weapons to fight. No natural weapons will work. We read in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, become strong in the Lord and in the might of his strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, because our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Because of this, take up the full armor of God in order that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand. Stand, therefore, girding your waist with the truth, and putting on the breastplate of righteousness and binding your shoes under your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace and everything taking up the shield of faith with which you are able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one and receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God with all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the spirit and to this end, being alert with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. During their time under Leviathan's influence, they haven't been able to prosper spiritually, but once forgiven and restored, they will be able to flow with the Holy Spirit, the right spirit, the true direction and purpose will be restored to their lives. So step number one is to ask God to forgive. 
those who have accidentally or purposefully been used by the Leviathan spirit need to ask God for forgiveness and to repent. Repentance is a change of heart, turning from sin and removing the agreement with it. If you meant it in your heart and are ready to walk away from the spirit of Leviathan, say a prayer and ask God to forgive you. And here's a prayer, a place for you to start. Lord, please remove any influence of this spirit of Leviathan in my life and my mind. I reject the spirit completely and wholeheartedly. Forgive me for any way, ways that I have served this spirit or any other working with it. Help me to recognize their lies and manipulations and to stand guard against them. Please protect me and those I love from future attacks and put a hedge of protection around us. I thank you, Lord, that you are always faithful and that you never leave me nor forsake me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Step two is to be born again. Become born again. In order to represent in order to represent Jesus here on earth and wield power in his name, we must be born again. This is a requirement to proceed to step three. If you haven't asked Jesus into your heart and would like to, I have a prayer to do so, a prayer to become born again. Next, we are going to cast these spirits out of our lives in the name and the power of Jesus, not our own power. They must obey. They don't have a choice. When we are a child of God, we wield God's power given to us to use against spiritual wickedness by Jesus' death and sacrifice on the cross. We are going to break all the covenants and agreements we've made with them, no matter how subtle they are or have been. We're going to do this by saying the following. Holy Spirit, I ask you to fill this room with your presence. Protect and guide me in spiritual warfare against enemies. The spirit of Leviathan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you and all the spirits operating with, you, with and for you together now. I command you to cease all, to con cease I command you to cease your activity and operations in my mind and life and in those that I have influenced. I break all covenants and agreements with you right now. I want nothing to do with you. You have no right here. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to go and never return. I lose a humble and contrite spirit in me. Lord Jesus, fill me completely with, with your Holy Spirit. Fill all the areas that are used and occupied by the Leviathan spirit or any other evil spirit operating with him. Thank you for your freedom and restoration. Amen. Step number four, make sure the person is told to stay in the word of God. That is their sword and their guidebook for survival in this world full of wickedness. They need to stay full of the Holy Spirit and on guard. Demonic spirits push boundaries and will keep checking and testing to see if they can get back into their house. In Matthew 12, 43 to 45, it talks about this very thing. Now, 
Whenever an unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it travels through waterless places, searching for rest, and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house where, from which I came out. And when they arrive, they find the house unoccupied and swept and put on, in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself. And they go in and they live there. And the last state of that person becomes worse than the first. So it will be for this evil generation also. An unoccupied house is one that is devoid of the Holy Spirit. And be sober, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, because you know the same kinds of sufferings are being accomplished by your community of believers in this world. 1 Peter 5 through 8. Your freedom was paid for 2,000 years ago. Jesus died on the cross as a sacrifice for our sins to pay in full the debt and curse and sins that sins carry. Among other things, with his death and resurrection, we have the right to freedom from demonic oppression and possession. We just need to realize whose we are and the rights that we have as children of God. Step up and claim your inheritance. Put on your armor and take authority over your evil spirits. I hope that this spiritual warfare information, including the 12 characteristics of this Leviathan spirit, has been helpful to you in some way. Remember, be diligent. Use the weapons of God that he has given us. And read your Bible. Fill, you, fill your life with the Holy Spirit. And you can be victorious.